Hey everyone, how's it going? GamerGeek here, and today I've got another awesome weekly update video for you guys. This has really been a pretty crazy week, if I'm being honest. I really didn't expect the turnout we got from the voice auditions, and there's still a whole week left until the auditions are officially closed, meaning we'll likely be getting a ton more. We also had a community vote to implement the next speedster character. I would hope you already figured out who won. I updated several game mechanics to ensure everything is fully functional, sat down with Comic Books vs. The World to go over development of Beta 2, and accidentally ran into a pretty hysterical visual bug that my brother is insisting we implement into the game. We'll be talking about all this and more, so let's jump into the video. Check out the list of timestamps in the video description for those who want to jump around. Alright, let's get into it. Isn't that weird? Why would someone click on a video and not watch all the way through? It's like cutting yourself off halfway through a sentence. Starting off, let's talk characters. Like I mentioned already, I posted a community vote this week to decide who will be the next speedster character introduced to Beta 2. The options, for those who weren't aware, were Savitar, Wally West, and Jay Garrick. To the surprise of no one, Savitar won out. Not to worry though, for all the Jay and Wally fans out there, just because your favorite speedster didn't win the vote, that doesn't mean they're out for good. I've seen numerous comments asking why I can't just add all three characters in, and the answer is, I can. I will in fact. Every character option posed to the community during votes will eventually be implemented into the game at some point in the future. The community votes just help me prioritize characters and features so that I don't get stuck working on things that you all aren't as interested in. So even though Pizza Face Barry won out this time, Wally and Jay will eventually be rotated back through for another community vote later on. Also keep in mind, as I work with my brother Comic Books vs. The World, some characters might skip voting entirely and be implemented straight away if necessary for the story. Okay, so Savitar won the community vote. So what? When can we actually expect to see some of his gameplay? Well, right now, actually. Working on Savitar, I knew a big thing about him that I just had to get right was his size. The man is an absolute beast of a character. I needed to make sure he towered over every other character, like in the show, but I also needed to make sure he was proportioned correctly, too. Using the Savitar model I found online, I guesstimated his height by looking up Grant Gustin's actual height and the estimated height of the Savitar armor posted online. I then sized up the model to what looked to be an appropriate height using the implemented Flash character for comparison, and then finally I had to rework the character model to make him a bit thicker in the midsection, unfortunately taking away his model figure, but making him look a little more show accurate. Now after all of that, he's ready for the game. I just had one last obstacle in my way. The goddamn lightning trail. Fans of my channel, the older ones at least, will recall a slip up, a little slip up I made when I first showed off this character in a test build of the game well before Beta 1 was ever even planned. I accidentally made his lightning trail blue. It was a minor mistake, a total brain fart on my end if I'm being honest, and I'll be damned if anyone was ever gonna let me live it down. I had hundreds, what felt like thousands of comments all attempting to explain to me what color Savitar's lightning trail really is. It's white, maybe with a tinge of blue, but it's white, it's white. Yes, it's white, I know it's white, it's freaking white! I was hoping the video would fade away into obscurity like the rest of my videos had done. I was so used to maybe a couple hundred views and then my video being dead. I looked forward to it for this one to be honest, but no, that of all the possible videos was the one. That one became the most viewed video on my channel ever. So you better believe I had his trail white this time around. I couldn't even delete the old video, change it and re-upload it because again, it's the most viewed video on my channel. But believe me, I learned my lesson. I don't make mistakes anymore. I'm a big boy. I realized that if I were to post a video with a mistake in it, I'd be throwing myself headfirst into a bunch of bullshit never again. So yeah, Savitar's been implemented into the game and he looks good. He controls well and he's correctly sized. He also has a couple alternate skins to choose from too. In case you missed the thumbnail, Savitar has his default look, the Savitar red armor, and finally Future Flash. Yes, Future Flash was originally a Flash alternative skin, but I swapped him over to be a Savitar skin. The character was the inspiration for Savitar, so I thought it was more fitting to have him as a Savitar alternate skin than a Flash skin. I also updated Future Flash's textures and animations to make him look a little better when running around. Looking at the alternate skins, you may be asking why Savitar Red has a slightly orange trail, and that's because I gave him a different one than default bluish white. We never actually see Barry run in the Savitar suit to the best of my memory, 
once he makes it red. So I gave him an orangish white trail because I imagine that's how his trail would look when cruising around in the armor. Moving forward, I need to implement Savitar into my combat system and we'll be good to go. Speaking of that, I'm entirely focused on the combat system at the moment, even more so now that I have another character to implement. I did finally give Arrow some abilities too and tried to spice up his gameplay to make it more interesting to use. Arrow can fight empty handed, kicking the crap out of whatever's in front of him, or pull out the bow to use some handy trick arrows. Right now, he only has two. He will have a whole arsenal eventually, but for now I gave him explosive shots which just deal straight damage, and freezing shots that slow enemies down for several seconds. It's funny because I've actually said before he's my least favorite character, but his combat system has really helped push the game forward, so thanks Arrow, I guess. When designing his trick arrows, it gave me the inspiration to categorize different damage types for the game. His explosive arrows deal fire damage, which will eventually be made to burn enemies and deal damage over time. His freezing arrows obviously deal ice damage, which will deal additional damage to speedster characters and penalize their speed to a greater extent. I'm also planning to add a lightning damage type, which will do less damage to speedsters but inflict status conditions to normal characters. The vibration damage type, which will carry unique status effects with it and the bleeding damage type, which will obviously do damage over time similar to the fire type, but takes longer to wear off and needs to be inflicted over several attacks. So obviously I've been working hard on this game. With that being said though, I obviously run into the occasional bug once in a while during development. One in particular caught my brother's attention when going over development with him. This is what happened when I accidentally imported the future flash skin into the game incorrectly. The model was attached to the Savitar skeleton, again incorrectly. And we ended up with this. <laughs> Introducing Slender Flash. Easily my brother's favorite feature of this game. Which is really a result of me importing the model incorrectly by accident. I was gonna delete him, but my brother insisted I leave him in as a funny, unlockable character. He even suggested giving him his own combat mechanics and everything. Whether or not Slender Flash actually makes it into the game, he's still an amusing accident that I thought would be really funny to share with you guys. Really quickly, before we close the video, I wanted to talk about the voice auditions and clear up some confusion I saw online. To those who don't have Discord, I'm sorry but I can't help you. I don't have another way for you to send me your voice auditions, and I've seen several people say they don't have or won't download Discord, but still want to participate, but unfortunately the community is the only option, I don't have another way, sorry. Lots of people have been also asking how the top three voices for each character will be notified and what that means for Beta 2. So the plan is, once auditions are closed, the top three voices will be contacted privately to let them know that they're in the top three for their respective characters. If someone doesn't respond, we can't effectively get hold of you, we'll have to eliminate you as an option and pick the next best voice to replace you. Once we know we found our top three for each character, Mrs. Gamer Geek and Clapper will handle the callbacks while I work on incorporating a series of voice lines from each person into Beta 2. Also, yes, once we've established the top three for each character, they will be announced on Discord, so there isn't any misunderstanding on whose voices will be put in the game. So what else has Gamer been doing? Well, unless you've been living under a rock for, like, a day. You'll know that Clapper, Cryden, and myself have been making several videos together. Like I mentioned last week, I received several comments and DMs asking if I'd ever do gaming videos or just game development videos. Well, now we're doing both. We recently launched our series, Ah! Craft, with episodes being uploaded across all three of our channels, and I recently uploaded the first episode of Gaming Mod, because who doesn't love a good Gary's Mod video? Assuming these videos gain some traction and popularity, we can obviously do a ton more, and we've even talked about making some of the videos community events and live streams. Honestly though, the videos are a ton of fun to record, it's just three idiot friends having a good time together, and hopefully we can make a ton more of these. So if you haven't already, head over to Cryden and Clapper's channels, and give those videos a like if you can. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I do hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, remember to leave me a like and a comment down below. Don't forget to join us over on Discord, and consider signing up for the Patreon. There's a lot of cool perks there, and you can even become an NPC in the Flash game. Go check out the GamerGeek website and scroll down to the events calendar so you stay up to date on any community events or important uploads. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next one.